Hello, welcome to the Gumble Corner. This is, uh, I'd say, the podcast about Indian cricket, um, but I would say that I'm biased. Um, down with the patriarchy, I think it's it's time to support the Bolsheviks. And uh, what better than a, a podcast named after India's record wicket taker in Test cricket? Uh, I'm Super Joshi, joined by uh, Nukul Pandey, Karan Mehta, Karan Mehta. And uh, Ritankar Bandabadye, um, the Bengali connection. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the term sounds difficult. No, I, did, I don't know. Did I, did I pronounce it okay? No, it was okay. Even Bengali okay. people find it difficult to pronounce. So. No worries. That's, that's because you guys make O's out of everything. You just make yeah. O's and shh. I'm convinced off. Bengali is... Dude, I'm convinced Bengali is not a language. I think you just took Hindi and just made everything in, like an A and O and an, and an S and S H. No, actually, it's a very sweet language. I mean, you know, every Bengali uh, word has a short form. Like Bandhavadhe uh, can be said Banerjee in short. English people call, used to call it Bengali uh, Banerjee when India wasn't independent, but nowadays we use the full form of Bengali. Keeping it real, I like it. Um, can I just say, actually, just because we got onto pronunciations and this wasn't even on the list, but Simon Dool. Is really good at pronouncing Indian names. And I'm quite impressed by that. So I just wanted to shout out Simon Dool of all the commentators. Right, guys. Um, how you been? Just been, obviously, basking in the, the glow of, of finally winning a World Cup, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lovely mustachioid smile there from Karan Mehta, who incidentally yeah. is the quarterback of this... Um, this podcast you know what i think maybe you could you could claim to be the lucky charm of, of that world cup being uh, uh, you went some of the games and, and actually you don't work for oracle but you know you are in the states yep i did go a couple of games i got to watch pakistan lose which is fun too um but i've also been to both world test championships and just for five days watched india get slaughtered so i don't know if i'm necessarily good luck or finally god threw us one bone on that miraculous catch like four years ago, if Sky drops that catch or steps on the line. So finally, something, something they were looking out for us. No, fair enough. I, um, for years, we switched our living room. And, um, well, the, I now have a TV. And when we first moved into this house, it was um, the 2007 World Cup. And uh, I only had a small TV and I watched it in the front room. This World Cup, I made a point of watching the games in the front room, the ones I could. And, um, I think I think there's something in that superstition of the front room TV because we've not won a 2020 World Cup since then. Um, so that was nice. Just, just to jump in here, for, for any fans of other nations listening to this, yes, we are Indian fans are just as nuts as you guys are. Yeah, it's absolutely you have to be. Can I say, by the way, I mistimed the wedding. Well, actually, no, my friend mistimed her wedding because she she decided to do a destination wedding uh, in Spain. Um, on the weekend of the final. Luckily, oh. the wedding was over, and the next day, everyone, uncles and everyone, was, was hooked up to the ICC feed in the hotel. Um, it's just like, you imagine this hotel in Spain, just a bunch of Indians around a screen. And um, by the time it came to the final, uh, like the final overs, I actually watched it just outside the airport on my phone um, mm. and high-fived the first Indian I could meet um, inside. <laughs> who actually I happen to share a cab with. So, yeah, it's all been um, very good. Right, guys, shall we Shall we get into what's happening? There's a, a hell of a lot of cricket to, to come up. Um, and I think probably listeners will have gathered that this is our, um, shall we say, tour match um, version of this episode, a little bit ropey, kind of a, a pilot. We're get, getting back into the swing of things after a long time out. Um, which Should we kick off with the Dalip Trophy that's been happening now? Um, and did you guys see the clip of Rishabh Pant just... Casually walking into uh, the team huddle of a different of the opposition. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen the video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Russia Pont got uh, got previous for this for this kind of thing. I speaking of tour games, I covered India's tour game against Leicestershire when they were when India were last in England uh, in twenty twenty two when they came back to finish that last test. And uh, Russia Pont played for both teams during that during that game. Uh, he the first ball was just with Boomerah. Bowling for Leicestershire, bowling to Rohit Sharma, batting for India, with Rishabh Pant keeping for Leicestershire, and uh, a bunch of Leicestershire Academy players uh, in the slip corner next to him. 
we were also told during that game that uh, no Indian players would be signing autographs because of COVID protocols. Uh, cut to lunch on day two, uh, Rishabh Pant on the outfield with uh, what must have been <laughs> half the stands uh, queuing up to sign autographs with him, uh, <laughs> including, as I was later told, the Bishop of Loughborough. <laughs> That's brilliant. It was Bumrah was chosen to play for Leicestershire purely because he's from Gujarat. Yeah, <laughs> there's people from India. There's people from all over India in Leicester. It's a very multicultural area in that sense. Uh, it was a very odd game, a very fun game, but a very odd game. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's the it's the last time that I think I've heard uh, Dilwale Dolhanya Le Jayenge playing before uh, before play at an English ground. Yeah, and that's that's not even like a really hype tune. I mean, that's just. I guess it's it's a it's a friendly it's a tour match so I guess it's a little bit lovey dovey but you would expect something else. Oh yeah, yeah. We're saving the uh, saving the drums for the uh, uh, for the for the real stuff. Uh, but yeah, the the, um, the loot trophy also Richard Punt featured in uh, one of the best highlights there. Kale Rahul diving catch uh, mm -hmm. where Richard Punt plays the uh, the helicopter shot that doesn't quite get off the ground and uh, oh, Kale Rahul. Shuman Gill took that catch, right? Shuman Gill, sorry, yes, it takes the catch running back towards the boundary uh, and. The, the the Leap Trophy is sort of Indian first class cricket and Indian test cricket. It's kind of snuck up on us a little bit. Mm. Uh, it's sort of it, it's unusual for India to have six month gaps in their test schedule. Uh, it also feels weird, by the way, that we're going to be playing a test match in Chennai in September, uh, <laughs> which uh, cannot be good for anybody, uh, to, to to be honest. But uh, but yeah, Indian first class cricket is is back and and up and running and. We've got uh, we've got a sort of it's the the not that one uh, game. So a Khan scored runs, not so far as the other one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, finger spinners taking wickets, not Jed Ajay, not Akshay, one of the other ones. Uh, the it, it does. I think we uh, Indian fans get kind of no no country has a monopoly on complaining in because there's there's so many Indian fans uh, on 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 Twitter increasingly, especially as Twitter's got ever more depopulated uh it, it can sort of feel like everything's wrong in indian cricket but it does every now and again you do you do see the 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 ridiculous depth uh in in indian first class cricket let alone uh beyond that the fact that you can put out four very competitive teams without uh without a large part of the first team playing and it's of as high a standard of the first class cricket as you're going to get anywhere in the world uh is pretty impressive is there then a, uh, perhaps a, an argument for having these uh, B and C teams also touring other places, um, especially, let's say, centre countries, um, so they get that, that exposure? That's what India or, A is for, isn't it? Sure. That's what the, you... that's what the A team is, is for, and that was it's not really got re-established properly after COVID, but it was a big part of the success of the Ravi Shastri teams was this very clear pathway between domestic first class cricket then to a team <clears throat> cricket and then into the international teams you look at all of the players who came through during that period and almost all of them had had dominant runs at uh, a team level showing essentially that they were too good for the level they were playing at and waiting for a for a hole to open up i think that a lot of teams around the world could do with establishing that essentially second second team uh type thing realistically if you're going to get trying to get the the b and c and t teams during touring when are they going to tour because they these guys have got to be playing these guys will want to play ipl cricket some of these guys will want county contracts and a lot of these guys are white ball internationals as well so fees it logistically uh i can see what you're, what you're saying that it might be a potential uh potentially a good idea but to be honest if I were a young cricketer wanting to, or even a not that young cricketer trying to get experience of playing in England, I would rather play county cricket. Okay. Well, yeah, no, like every every uh, country has an A team. Um, I was just, uh, I was thinking maybe they could join in playing against like the islands and Scotland of this world. Maybe even an additional uh, tour could be kind of for the minor counties. But yeah, look, but the thing is everyone not, doesn't get a county contract. Um so it was, yeah, thinking around that. But yes, you're right. Logistically, it's hard, especially if they're playing white ball as well. Um, and until Mumbai Indians buy a, a hundred franchise, you probably won't see any Indians playing 
white ball in in um, in the UK <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right, uh, Akash Deep seems to have uh, taken a nine for in a game. Should we just drop uh, Siraj and, and Bumran? Is he, he's, he's like he should just now be uh, you know the, the the opening bowler for, against Bangladesh, right? Current I mean, gone. You're shaking your head. <laughs> it's a clickbait question. Yeah, it's just something like you don't use Boomer's name in vain in this household. <laughs> this is true, yes. And so, like, I don't even take that joke lightheartedly. He's, he's my whole heart and soul. But, yeah, like we're touching. I mean, this is, it's new captains or new coaching, new sort of regime at the helm. It is, it is going to be a little bit exciting, and I don't think uh, – we really have all the voids filled as of right now, so I do think there's going to be a lot of come ups and a lot of surprises in this tournament. And I think on top of the bowling, even the batting, I'm not, I'm not walking into this Bangladesh series expecting a series win. I think it's going to be a grinded out sort of, um, hopefully win like two one or whatever sort of series. Um, so if this Bully Trophy can find those hidden gems that IPL's done pretty well on for white ball cricket, then this could be a really exciting sort of transitional phase for India because we are getting kind of older in age in terms of like our prime players yes yes and also as um the ability to play spin seems to have um taken a nosedive either spins are getting better are getting better or the the, the technique just doesn't seem to be there as there's been a focus on fast bowling I don't know which it is uh, Duncan, you got a, any thoughts on that uh, I think Ashwin made a uh, tweet a few days back that uh, GRS has been introduced in the lift trophy this season uh, so that mm-hmm. uh, there's this old school cricket technique where batters try to uh, defend the ball with the bats behind their bats and uh, when DRS was not there, those uh, umpires uh, wouldn't have given out even in spite of an appeal on those kinds of situations when the bat used to be behind the pad and the ball used to hit the pad. But nowadays with DRS being extensively used in international cricket, every form of cricket, uh, batters need to adjust to that situation. Batters need to stop playing those old school techniques. I'm not saying those are bad techniques, but uh, you have to evolve with time, right? And Ashwin uh, brilliantly uh, explained uh, the advantages and disadvantages with these kind of small changes uh, the Indian domestic cricket is going through. So. Uh, this new generation of batters who are already uh, this this generation of batters uh, they don't uh, stay on the crease for long they try to uh, play aggressive shots more often than not and uh, the quality of batting up uh, against spin is, uh, especially because you know in these kind of pitches there are pitches like Kanpur there are pitches in Chennai or a few pitches in Bangalore Alu uh, where domestic cricket uh, is played quite more than pitches like Wankhede or Eden Gardens or maybe in Mumbai uh, where uh, the ball, you know, spins both ways and spins sideways more often than not. Then batters used to adjust to those conditions and these DRS changes and all will help them uh, to get used to the international level. They will try to adapt to the techniques and play those front foot, uh, uh, try to defend the ball, uh, not keeping the bat behind the pad and all these changes. But yes, the quality uh, of batting against spin has obviously dropped. And... Uh, Spinners have improved their quality as well, but uh, you know, I was I was uh, wishing that India B had uh, listed Jadeja in their team, but he pulled out due to some reasons I'm not sure. And they had Sai Kishor in their team as well, so probably the two best. Okay, there's Akshay Patel, so two of the three best uh, left-arm orthodox spinners in India at this moment. I was really wishing to watch them bowl together from both ends, but Jadeja pulled out, so Sai Kishor was alone. I, both of them has never played together for any team. Uh, Sai Kishor was in. CSK, I think, for two or three years, but uh, didn't get a single game and then he went to Gujarat Titans in the IPL and got a few games. But uh, yes, there are very good spinners in the domestic circle who are not getting games as well. I mean, they, they would play for good teams in Ranji Trophy and then when uh, these kind of tournaments where selectors play a big role, they come to watch the matches because Dulip Trophy, Rani Trophy, these are the kind of games where, look, selectors will not uh, watch every Ranji Trophy game. There will be a two, three month uh, tournament and at a time, there will be 11 or 12 matches going on. They will obviously be looking into the big games uh, where Mumbai is playing or Bengal is playing, suppose Tamil Nadu is playing. But in Dulip Trophy, you have uh, uh, selected uh, a very creamy layer is playing, you know, Rishabh Pant and Shubman Gill, these kind of players who are regularly playing international cricket. And when somebody like Mushir Khan or uh, Saiki Show, these kind of players who are uh, already in the eye of the selectors but have not been into the international level, they are coming up and competing with these uh, players in that high pressure level matches. You have to up your game. Uh, Mushir Khan has scored that century when the team was already seven, six or seven wickets down in double, digit, double digits. So, yeah, these kind of things actually make the Indian domestic cricket much more 
special or any kind of game where a junior player comes in and competes against uh, international players, high quality game, high pressure game. That's why I like Indian domestic cricket. I mean, I have not been watching cricket for the last uh, more than two months, maybe since India won the T20 World Cup. But uh, I have been regularly checking the scores of the Lift Trophy because I, I want to see these kind of players doing well in their crucial situations like Mushri did or somebody like Akash Dip did. Uh, because of the depth and the number, sheer number of players that India have, they can do what a lot of other countries can't do or find it much harder to do, which is to have more stepping stones between first class and, in this case, test cricket. Uh, and I guess to a to an extent, the extent is true in in, in limited overs cricket. But you have, uh, as Ritanko was saying, you have you almost have a, like a stepping stone. You have uh, you're showing yourself on better pitches against better opposition. Uh, whether it's uh, the Rube Trophy, Irani Trophy, India A, so it's a much closer analog to first class cricket. It's a better predictor of success than just first class cricket we've seen uh i live in england and and we've seen the england selectors increasingly realize that county cricket is not a particularly good predictor of success at test <laughs> level and so you're having to look for other attributes and they've got a lot of those decisions right but you have a more robust statistical basis to uh, to make that call on when you're looking for who are the next guys who are the uh, who are the people we bring in in case of an injury or who are we looking to bring into the team in the future in, in Indian cricket than, than you do in other, in other nations. And I think that is only to be uh, only to be encouraged, frankly. On the spin point, um, a couple of things. Firstly, the spinners who've been doing well in Indian first-class cricket have tended to be a lot of left-arm spinners, a lot of finger spinners who basically rely on accuracy and letting the pitch do the work. And we... They, those guys haven't always succeeded unless they are also able to batter. We saw Shabazz and Nadim get picked uh, a few years ago against against England, and he looked fairly unthreatening on some quite helpful pitches. We don't mm-hmm. see, we haven't seen too many wrist spinners come through in in recent times. We've seen there's a natural conservatism when you're picking a team. You want to just win the game. You want to do the thing that is going to most win you that game on in those conditions, and that doesn't always lend itself to picking wrist spinners who might be expensive or you might uh, have them batting and then uh, not concentrating on their on their spin bowling so much. Uh, also, there was a... Jared Kimber wrote a piece recently about Indian playing of spin recently at international level and what he found out was that actually the Indian, Indian batters are still doing better against spin than, than other international countries in the same conditions it's just that everybody is doing worse because the pitches in by and large in indian test cricket recently have been so spin friendly that you don't need to be a world-class do something from nothing spinner pull something from nothing spinner to succeed and it's put a premium on trying to be aggressive because it doesn't really matter how you play there's going to be one with your name on it at some point so i think that this when people are comparing against uh, batting generations of the past and we're comparing against uh, pitchers of the past, I think we need to be a little bit careful that we don't start getting a bit sort of misty-eyed and start trying to claim that with some some golden age in in, in Indian batting against spin in in oh, maybe, times, the, just that those guys couldn't pay seam though, so <laughs> so it's you know it's yeah. okay in the well, same in the same way as the ones now, I would say it's it's what you're exposed to isn't it absolutely the, absolutely the, the um no, that was my point yeah the, the, yeah the, uh, as there's been a so, more of a focus on on facing seam um and indians yeah. fast bowlers have got better that has naturally then um led to a rebalancing versus spin uh, uh, and weirdly at the same time india has started producing uh for a few years pitches that were almost impossible to survive on <clears throat> uh in 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 test cricket uh, ironically, completely taking out their fast bowlers, uh, negating them as a force, but that's a completely different rant, so we won't go there. Uh, but also, also at the same time, you know, on that they would shoot their own spinners in the foot or well, their own batsmen because in op- like you would say pie chuckers or, or people who I mean actually, and I don't mean this as dis- I don't mean to call Joe Root a pie chucker, but Joe Root made the point when he goes the pitch wasn't good if someone like me is taking a five for yeah 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 no, it, it, it it again this is an entirely separate rant but uh, yes <laughs> pitches that. 
it's just therapy. It's you, okay. You want a pitch that is going to allow good players, whatever their skill set is, to perform. Yeah. And for a long time, for a little while now, by and large, India didn't have that. I thought the pitches when England toured earlier this year were actually pretty good. For that, mm. we did see good batters scoring runs. We did see good fast bowlers doing well. Better than and the last saw... tour for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It was just much more. It was just better cricket all around. And we saw, mm. you know, Shoy Bashir bowled really well, but he had to bowl well to get those wickets. Yeah. And I, I don't. I don't from a, even just from a competitive point of view, like everyone's going to want to produce pitches that that uh that benefit them i don't really see how a pitch that reduces the gap which is quite considerable between ashwin jadeja called deep and opposition spinners which makes it much much harder for your batters and negates your fast <laughs> bowlers who are brilliant i don't really understand how that is an advantage to be <laughs> to be frank um yeah and it'll be I really think... interesting to see what happens in this bangladesh series because Bangladesh have a really good fast bowling attack now, I actually have a relatively low number of good spinners for for them. You've got Fajal Islam and Mehdi Hassan and maybe Shakib, but you don't have entire teams of left-arm spinners. You've now got three, four good Bangladeshi fast bowlers. You see what they did to Pakistan mm. recently. We've seen what they did in the T20 World Cup. <clears throat> How much you can actually do anything in Chennai in September is open to question. But I'll be really interested to see what sort of pitches we have for this uh, for this series uh, in uh, in Chennai and Kanpur. Well, the difference is between Pakistan and India is that India have Gishu Swijeswald who learned basketball from Ben Duckett, so that, that's, that's going to be a <laughs> big difference. <laughs> oh dear. No, you're right. Right? Can we just uh, you mentioned um, pitches, and, and that's something Ravi Shastri to say. Don't forget the pitch. Obviously, he was talking in terms of abroad and foreign um, conditions. But there's something to be said that for at home. And, Karan, you mentioned coaches earlier on. And we've kind of not touched on the fact that Godwin Gumbid is, is now in charge. And he is a different sort of character to Rahul Dravid. For me, the, 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 the switch, maybe some call it a drop-off, between Kohli Shastri um, and, Gum, uh, and, and um, Sharma Dravid was, was quite marked. It's very, a bit more... Not docile, a bit more relaxed, should we say, rather than in your face of Kohli Shastri. And and Gumbir is a bit more of that in your face character. <laughs> he's you know, he's a he's a deli boy, shall we say. What what are you expecting, Garan? Because I you you're you, yeah, you've got a big smile on your face right now. And I think this is I, I, you want to answer. <laughs> I like being the most hated team in the world. Because they, they don't hate nobodies. And Gautam is gonna lead us there. Dravi, I think docile is the right word. He's kind of mundane. He wins. I think he's really good with the kids. I kind of like that sort of demeanor with the young kids who are going to be emotional and stuff like that, and that's all hunky-dory. But Gautam's going to kick your ass and tell you about it, too, and that's the shit that I love. And I think and I think that's a significantly overlooked part of the more, what, like, eight to ten years success of India cricket overseas that wasn't really around when I was growing up. It's because we always were more ill-mannered and always on the back foot and always reacted instead of being proactive where um, Ravi and Virat would take, would take it to them, would challenge them, would bring the fight to them, would scream in their face, unprovoked or unsolicited, whatever the case is. And well, I like that. Uh, Karen, Knuckle made a, an absolute face when you called Dravid mundane. But, um, and I, I kind of agree with it. I wouldn't say Dravid's mundane. <laughs> I mean, the guy is like one of the, the all-time greats of the game. No, but I, you, you, I to, to, yes. back your point, to back your point, he wouldn't have... I don't think the Indian team are in the long room greeting uh, Bumrah and, and, and uh, Shami as they come off under Dravid. I don't think it's happening. Yeah, it just, I mean, and Monday, it's just boring. It's like, you know what you're going to expect. It's a ham and cheese breakfast. There's no, like, I'm not, I, I'd be more surprised if I saw Dravid, like, jump up out of excitement than I would be if he fell asleep in the stands. Like, that's just sort of the personality. Yeah, and I think there's a time and place for that. The way that he batted for India, that's exactly what we needed. And that's his personality. And there's no issue with that. But I'm just saying as a fan, you want... And I'm sure Dravid had that same fight and that same tenacity and that same will. It just wasn't as apparent. But as a fan, you want to see it. I want Until it. he lifted the trophy. Then you saw it then. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Great job. <laughs> Love him for it. But I mean, it's very similar to Gary Kirsten. Gary Kirsten wasn't as uh, bullish and as uh, razzmatazz like in your face. But he won, and I guess there's a time and a place for everything. But I think Dravid and Virat could have worked out a little bit better because that is a little bit of a yin and yang. 
But um, I fucking love Gauthi. Gauthi was my favorite cricketer growing up. He just talks shit to everybody, win or lose, it doesn't matter. And that's what I want in our cap. I want us to push back. I want us to fight. Because you can't go to Australia and England all the time and uh, expect everyone to play by the rules and expect it to be a super PG environment. You have to be able to step up and have the fire. And hopefully Gautam does that. I'm a little bit scared that it might be a little bit too much and he might rub our senior players the wrong way here sooner rather than later. But until then, it's us against the world and fuck everyone else. Um, well, I, I'm not sure there's much to say to that. <laughs> I actually agree with you quite a lot. Ritanka, any thoughts on um, no, look, I'm, I'm, on that attitude? I'm okay with what Karan is saying. I mean, uh, Gambir has got that attitude, that aggressiveness, which we like. We, we as a fan would obviously like that, uh, like to replicate what uh, Ravi Shastri and Virat was like. Uh, Ravid had his own style and all those is fine, but I really miss uh, Shastri Kohli, that pair, and what they have done for India in test, uh, specifically, uh, not just aggressiveness or intent or anything, but uh, also logically what they uh, what they brought into the table was uh, the rise of Indian fast bowling, right? Because under them, uh, India had got fast bowlers before them. They had Srinath and they had Venkatesh Prasad before that, Kapil Dev, long back, then Patches, Zahir Khan and all that. But, uh, as a pace attack, when we talk about Bumra, Shami, Siraj, or uh, even there was Bhuvi, Ishan was there. So when you go to team, uh, when you go to countries like Australia or New Zealand or even England, uh, you you want uh, not only just one bowler like Bumra or one bowler like Shami, you want a whole pace attack, three bowlers, whoever opens, whoever comes in the middle to take wickets, you expect them to be, you know, uh, that intent uh, which Ravi and Virat had, and not just about the bowlers, the intensity was always on the field. But uh, yes, Gambira has got that attitude and all. That's fine. But I think he, what he really lacks is experience. Because yes, Bangladesh series that would be on the home. India will obviously win. There could be challenges. I'm not sure the matches could get over in six or seven sessions as well. Because Chennai and Kanpur both has historically proven to be spin friendly pitches. Chennai recently has been more of that sort. Uh, Kanpur is quite unpredictable, uh, low bounce and all that from the second day. But uh, yes, uh, that series is not of much importance for. Uh, or rather, that won't prove much of Gambhir as a coach uh, for the Indian Test team. But when they go abroad, I think uh, what Gambhir would really miss is experience because he has not been even the coach of any Indian A side or uh, any red ball domestic team or in junior team or whatever. He has been the mentor for two IPL teams. Yes, he has lifted a trophy this IPL season as a mentor. But IPL and Test cricket are really different ball games. So and we'll also whether... nobody knows nobody knows what mentor means. Yeah, <laughs> it can mean something completely different in a com in two completely different settings. He's just My... taking him out for Vrabha. <laughs> well, but I mean, that that's fine too. Um, it's frankly, mentoring, I, right? <laughs> frankly, between Rahul Dravid and Gautam Gambhir, I know who I'd rather go for Vrabha with. Uh, yeah, but uh, but I... Gautam Gambhir was a thoroughly admirable player. There's absolutely no doubt World about Cup that. World Cup winner, yeah, and, and played a fantastic inning in that final. He's hilariously bitter about the fact that it's been overshadowed by Dhoni and Mahela Jaya Wardani. Uh, uh, and I, I don't mind a little bit of a chip on the shoulder. I think it's necessary. My issue with Gautam Kambir, potentially, and look, we don't know, because, you know, as as Ritanko said, we have no idea what he's like as a coach. He doesn't know what he's like as a coach. I would... I don't think India are in the position where they now need to be chippy, us against them siege mentality they're too good for that they don't need that anymore this is not the days of Gangali taking off his uh, shirt on the balcony of lords this is not the days uh, of uh, you know Harbhajan picking a fight with somebody or Sri Sant bowling bounces just to prove <laughs> he just could anyone. bowl bounces yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> no, yeah Shri, I, I, was, I was actually gonna, I was actually those are two separate sentences but yes uh, <laughs> Sri Sant bowling bounces at Jacques Callis just to, just to prove that he could or uh, waving his bat in Andre Nell's face Yes, India are. I'm glad you mentioned that because I wanted to pick up on that. All Sorry, things being equal. Point. <clears throat> yeah, all things being equal, in equal conditions, India are a better team in Test cricket than most teams. India will beat any team in a series or or uh, or a game if they if they play well and someone from the opposition doesn't have a blinder. Um, they the needs of the. The needs of the moment have changed, and I think that you look at the players who come into Indian teams now. The amount of people they have to get past, and you look at the personal stories of some of these guys, like Yashasvi Jaiswal, like Rishabh Pant, 
like Sir Faraz Khan. Uh, you look at what Siraj has gone through. Even guys who aren't really in the team anymore, like Nathrajan, or Washington Sunder. Uh, mm. These guys have incredible, have gone through incredible amounts of stuff just to get there. The idea that these guys lack fight or that these guys don't have the heart is just re is patently not true. And what what you need, uh, I think, is for all of Shastri's bluster and his willingness to take on the, uh, you know, to take all the pressure on himself and uh, go out there and start shouting about bubble, 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 bubble. Uh, <laughs> uh, still a clip I go to every now and again when I need a laugh. Um, <laughs> but and, and for all his showmanship, he and Bharatharan and the rest of that team that helped India win two series in in Australia, they planned really, really well. And they were able to get the most out of the talents that they had and stop the opposition uh, playing playing their game. Uh, and even in England, um, certainly in the first part of that, in the 2021 part of that series. I don't... I don't know if we know fully who the backroom staff are going to be yet for, for, for Gotham Computer. There's always a bit of a turnover there. How they all work together is going to be really important. That planning aspect is going to be really important. And I I wonder and I worry a little bit about what happens to a Gotham Computer led team when things start going wrong. What happens to Gotham Computer when things start going wrong? Are you going to Gotham Computer as a player with a problem? Are you going to him for encouragement, for support? Are you going to him when you need you need someone to pick you up and like, help you stop worrying about all of the things that you have to worry about as an Indian as an as an Indian cricketer? Is he going to be transmitting confidence and calm and uh, yes, we can do this and positivity when things start start going wrong? From what we know of him as an off field presence. The answer is no, and that that really has to be. He he's going to have to develop that if he's going to be a successful coach, because these guys are these guys are beyond the stage of needing, uh, of needing belief and and all of this and all of this stuff. Um, they they need encouragement and the tools and the confidence. Um, and I worry about Gotham Beer's ability to provide that. That's fair enough, yeah. Um, Karan's dog disagrees with you, I think. He's a bit of a good <laughs> fan. Um, <clears throat> Ravi Shastri, I think, d deserves even more respect than he gets. The guy was in the commentary box. He was He's, you know, analysing things in TV. And then he went, he put on his coach track suit, and he backed up his talk. He delivered. Like, there's no... It's, it's rare for people to be able to do that and to the level he did. Um, so that that is, you know... In love itself. Um, Gotham Gobi, we've heard of players going from IPL and getting Indian call ups. It's, it's kind of happened with a coach, which is, is fascinating. And actually, something you mentioned, Garen, about um, Kohli Dravid, we've also almost got the reverse of that because we've got Gambir and Sharma. That's, that's going to be interesting. And like you said, Nicole, I think probably got these more of an Indian dad than. Uh, I'm around the shoulder, shoulder kind of guy. So it's going to be funny. It's going to be interesting, shall we say. Um, one thing I would say, and I've said this before in previous iterations where we've been on podcasts together, is I'm not a fan. I mean, I'm a fan of aggression, like in bowling and stuff. Uh, you mentioned Andre Dale, Mr. Trisand. Dale Stain was a great bowler for me. Brett Lay was a great bowler for me. Um, I like Bumra for similar reasons. Show me as well. Sometimes, I and I, and I and I say this about Siraj because I criticise other teams fast bowlers for doing it i'm not necessarily on board with siraj's antics sometimes um and that kind of faux aggression i would call it because it distracts from his a, a brilliant ability with the ball and it's like dude just go and bowl him something that just hits off, off like the top of off i mean this guy had me swearing very um quietly because my mum would have thrown a, a, a jumper at me. Um, with, I think it was the Oval, right? Was it the Oval or Lords in that Test match where he just took, he just cleaned up at the end, and I was like, I was like, holy mum, don't hear me. Um, and he's he's able to deliver brilliant moments. It's like maybe it's, it's just youth, um, but he doesn't need to be such a lafunga sometimes. He could just just bowl. Um, oh, maybe I'm just old fashioned. You guys tell me that I'm an uncle. I don't know. It's going to be very hard for anyone to stop him doing that. It just kind of seems to be his character, doesn't it? Fair enough, yeah. And I think he bowls off of it too. Like I think, I think, 
I don't think, like you said, full aggression. And to an extent, yeah, I don't think, like, if he's in a street fight, I don't necessarily think he's going to win. But I think he, like, builds, like, he, he, he finds something out of that aggression. What he, like, fake throws the ball to the, get the batter back at the crease and, like, yells and shushes them. Yeah, like, to us, it's just, like, optics. Like, what are you doing? You're trying to make a show out of this, whatever. But I think he builds to that. I think he fires himself up. There's athletes like that all over the place, especially, like, in the NFL. They're, like, smash their head on the wall just to, like, get themselves amped up. I just think that's what he does. And I'm biased. Where you're an Indian alcoholic, I love it. I love this showmanship. <laughs> it, it does seem to be for him rather than... there. Are, I always got the impression with some of the Australian teams, particularly towards the leading up to Sandpaper Gate, that some of that aggression was for show. That was, like, they were, like... I am Australian man. Uh, in the like, you know, you can go around doing that if you're Shane Warne, if you're Matthew Hayden. Like, ultimately, none of this, ma- no one will care. I promise you, nobody will care that Siraj carries on like that if he takes wickets in India win. Uh, ultimately, uh, and that probably yeah. shouldn't be the case. To be honest, like we should be a little bit more um, critical of not critical, analytical of of the kind of behavior we want and you know does it actually help um, sure and what i mean is if, if we're cussing other other players from other teams for doing yeah, it we've kind of got I, to do the same I, I, the same I, to our own guy basically personally i don't i don't really as long as it's not actually you know there's a line somewhere and you know actual uh, abuse and is I, i'm quite by case as far as these as far as these things Tim Payne. as far as these things no these go like uh, the in terms of the I suppose this, this is a good segue kind of onto the, the, what we think the team might be for that first test match, is mm-hmm. Siraj's spot seems to be really the only one that's under threat. I mean, Rishabh Pant presumably comes back in as wicketkeeper. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think so. And I think it's, it's harsh on Dhruv Jarrell, but especially after listening into uh, the other team's team huddle, I think that's going to seal it for Rishabh Pant. He, oh. He's got to play. Um, there's no way. I would like Sir Franz Khan to be in. I mean, I'm excited to see him. This is what, his second, second test series now? Um, and it would be exciting to see. He, he's worked hard and waited a long time to get his uh, opportunity, and I think it, it would be now exciting to see what he does in his sophomore series, if we borrow an Americanism. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it, it would seem to me fairly obvious what, I say what, 10 of the 11 are going to be. It'll be, I mean, let me know if anybody, but my would be, you know, Rohit and Yusuf Jaisal opening, Shubman Gill at three, Rat Kohli at four, Sarfraz Khan, Rishabh Pant, Jadeja, Ashwin, Kuldeep, Boomra, and Siraj. Uh, probably for me, Siraj, but you could make a case for Akash Deep. Well, I think uh, Boomra and Siraj are going to start the first match and you know, will win it, and then maybe Siraj can be rested in the next. Or well, maybe Boomra gets rested. I think that will happen. Or maybe Boomra will be rested and Akash Deep can play in his place. Yeah, I think maybe if it's 2 0 up, then the third tier, test, Boomra gets a well earned rest. Am I the uh, other thought? It's only a two test series. Is it? Sorry. Yeah, but if it's two up, then, then Bruno's definitely getting a rest. I thought it was three series. I think that's the T20s that are confusing me because um, there's some pointless T20s in there. This is why this is why Knuckles the uh, the brains of the outfit. I, I I know I know people were there was some I, it would be harsh on Drew Jarrell, but unfortunately that like I I will pick Richard. I cannot if Richard Pont is fit, he plays. Yeah, whatever, no the format, whatever the match, whatever the whatever the match. I don't care. No, absolutely, absolutely. There's no there's no kind of doubt about that. Unfortunately for Drew. Um, and so, look, uh, the other other bowlers that are, you, I mean, you generally mentioned them. Um, Aksar Patel, Kuldeep Yadav, Yash Dayal, Jaspreet Bumrah, Mohamed Siraj, and then Akash Deep, Jadeja, and Ashwin, are, and actually Aksar as well, actually are listed as all-rounders. Um, <clears throat> you think there is a, there might be a bit of swapping out between Kuldeep and Aksar, or you think Kuldeep probably going to be playing the whole series? I think it would be incredibly harsh to I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think it would be incredibly <laughs> harsh to leave Kuldeep out. Um, I think Kuldeep has established himself now as India's as one of India's best spinners. And I think he's the guy who leads the spin attack when one, or Ashwin, one of Ashwin or Jadeja is no longer in the team, which is unfortunately not that far away mm. uh, now. And I could even see him, I could even see him playing, having Jadeja and Kuldeep playing. Because unfortunately, they seem to have got into this habit of leaving Ashwin out for overseas test matches. You can make a quite clear case for if you're playing two spinners, if you're playing Jadeja, one spinner and three fast bowlers overseas. As 
I I love Ashwin and I think he's a genius and I think he's been he's curiously underrated for how incredible a cricketer he is but I don't think you would be all that unhappy or you would not be that happy as an opposition put it that way facing Kuldeep Yadav mm-hmm. Okay, so Bapu on the bench um, do you, Karan Ritankar, do you agree with um, uh, Knuckles' top order? Uh, yeah, that's fine. And uh, also, we were talking about Gambhir and Rohit being the pair, the new pair we're going to see. Uh, the main problem, I mean, one problem which affects this series or the upcoming, the next few series is that how long Rohit is going to be the captain. I, I, I'm not I'm not saying that Rohit is going to, I mean, the age factor is there. Even Ashwin, Jadeja, they're all aging. They're all into the 36, 37. So... If Gambhir stays there for maybe two years, three, two and a half years, I think uh, a couple of players from this main core, a few of them are already gone. Pujara, Rahani, we have left them. Now Rohit, Ashwin, Jadeja and Virat, they are aging. So I think this shopping and changing will keep on happening for the next few months. And the home series, the weaker teams are the places where you can try to experiment this. So I think, yeah, Jaiswal and Rohit opens, then Gil... Pant, if he's fit, is already playing. I mean, there's no second thought about it. Sarfraz should play. Sarfraz is actually a very good uh, spin hitter and a, a really good player. And he deserves to play, though. Uh, his debut was incredible. He got an unlucky run out, I think, when Jadeja was on 99, something like uh, quick single and all those. Uh, Mark would uh, hit a direct threat, non strikers end. And uh, the way he has been playing domestic cricket for the last three, four years since that COVID outbreak, and he has, like, uh, there has been articles on him being called only second to the dawn with average of over 100 in domestic cricket. Uh, near about 100, I think, 96, 97, like that. It was so, really interesting listening to the English commentators during that uh, series earlier this year. Uh, all of them were saying, including sort of Atherton and Hussain did a lot of uh, post-match podcasts. They were like, why has this guy not been picked earlier? I mean, yeah. Well, a lot of people in India have said that as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and the answer seems to be because he's got a belly. Well, I, but I, yeah, no, maybe it's he, the Kale he, factor, right? He's, I, and I'm partial to Kale because he's the only one out of the current squad that I've actually met. Well, I'm not sure he's actually he's not in the squad. The only person I've actually met is Kale, and I have a picture with him. So I'm I'm biased towards him. But I mean, I think he's probably been hogging a few test spots. He, he's the he's the good utility player. He's the uh, he's the guy in the you know, if a wiki keeper gets injured, if an opener gets injured, if a middle order player gets injured, Kale or Apple can can come in and do a do a perfectly fine. And if job, Coley's but... tired of shouting at stumps, he's also handy as well. That's not his job anymore. <laughs> he's vice shouter at stumps. <laughs> yes, there is that. Um, cool. All right, guys. Um, shall we just quickly throw forward to what's coming up? Because I mean, in the next episode, next week, we're going to be delving more into the first test as a preview. Um, but there's actually a, loads of cricket to come up over the next few months, which will be covering, of course, here on, on the Kumbh Corner. So 19th of September is the first test, India-Bangladesh, second test on the 27th. Then there's a, uh, was it three-match 2020 series between with uh, Bangladesh. Then 16th of October, New Zealand arrive uh, for their first test, three tests against New Zealand, and then a couple of, uh, or three 2020s with South Africa, no, five, four, actually. And then yeah. see you at the Gabba, uh, India head over to, Australia so, uh, and also in between all that there's the Women's World Cup um, for, uh, and actually we could go into the new year because then England arrive in India as well so there's actually loads to be discussed over the next few months um, I'm glad to be getting um, some shall we say best of out of my uh, cricket subscription on TV um, have you guys got any uh, last thoughts before we call it today oh no I think I'm excited. I kind of like. I'm excited about this because I think Knuckle and I have a very differentiating point of view on how to approach this. Yeah, so Shastri gonna... Dravid vibes. Yeah, he's like you've the got brain. a mustache like Shastri anyway. So yeah, well, I'm like Shastri. It's like ah, is he kind of drunk right now? No one really knows, but it's kind of exciting. What's he gonna say? Yeah, uh, sh- you're uh, your Shastri 1983 model. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like the brains and the calm and probably the intelligence behind this operation. We're talking about the stats, and I'm. I'm probably just going to piss the most amount of people off because you know, I'm not I'm not necessarily the biggest Sour Fraz fan. I think at some point fitness has to be um, important. You seem to hide him around in the field, and that, that always worries me. The but he's got out, a big frame. He's, he's big boned, you have to say. Like, I mean, genuinely, this, like, uh, not, he, he does have like a big frame, like 
bone wise. Okay. Well, uh, nonetheless, he still is the same athlete that he is. Um, and I like that line. I'm going to use that. Um, uh, <laughs> big friend, big bone, just lots of milk. Um, but yeah, so, um, no, I'm really excited for this and where this goes. And hopefully I have to switch to my iPad because my computer just completely like burned and crashed out there in the middle of that. Um, so we'll have to figure that out. But it was Siraj. He was uh, trash talking your laptop. I'm a Siraj fan. I like I like this shit. I like when he throws it back. I like when we hit Rizwan in the wrist in the T20 World Cup when he was diving back for no reason. I love that shit. Oh yeah, no, that, that's fine. That's another good example. You can never tell when Mohamed Rizwan's injured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy's like James Brown. He goes down. I can't go on. Back up <laughs> yeah, he comes. Yes. <laughs> then there he is. Can I just say, actually, while we're talking about Bangladesh, I used to have a fair amount of goodwill towards Bangladesh, um, even despite the whole snake stuff. I and mean, we, we are snake charmers, it's fine. But last year, while the uh, abomination of, of Ahmedabad was going on, and I had, for some stupid reason, I decided to work that day. I didn't look at the calendar of the finals. And I was, there were some Bangladeshis there. And we were having a, a cordial conversation until I looked at the score and I was looking at the screen. And they were smirking in my face as India were getting ruined. And from then on, I was like, no, you guys need to be crushed. Just just ruined. I want you to go home in tears uh-huh. using a brown paper bag that you're just kind of breathing in because you're having palpitations. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. So I think they already had gone home from the World Cup in tears by that point, hadn't they? No, no, well, there yes. he is. no, no, I mean, I just mean it from there henceforth in anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm quite enjoying this development of, ba- of Bangladesh as a team who can who can snark and actually back it up a little bit. <laughs> Dude, they are Tottenham. They're Tottenham is what they are. <laughs> they have, they, yeah, they are pretty Spursy. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty Spursy. Um, but uh, they played really well against Pakistan, an admittedly very poor Pakistan team. But they played really well. Um, they've now got a, a, a team who seems to know what they're doing. Uh, an administration that seems to be mostly getting out of people's way, kind of, uh, uh, and still you, and then you've got Shakib Al Hassan stirring in the middle of it. Yes, but the good thing is Jay Shah's president now. So if anything happens to us, they'll like if Bangladesh beats us, they'll just be blown out of the planet in terms of cricket team. Won't we'll, exist. We'll, we'll we'll get onto that next time because. Um, but I will say that Jay Shah, um, there is something to be said about how he got his role, but actually what he seems to have done with it. Um, but with that, Ritankar, Nakul, Karan, I think it's time to, to leave it there. Um, listeners, do, do remember to subscribe and like this wherever you found us um, and check the description for all our details. Um, until next week, it's Kumbh Corner, signing out. <laughs>